So my name is Chris, and this is uh, Petunia. And Petunia is a French bulldog, and she is four years old. And I've had her, um, she came from a breeder in, in Missouri. And um, I've had her since she was about eight weeks old, and we've been uh, best buddies ever since. She's a very, uh, very loyal and intelligent dog. So um, a couple of the, the things about Frenchies are they're not actually from France. Um, they were bred originally in, in England, and the, around the, uh, the early 1900s, um, right, in, right in the time of kind of the Industrial Revolution, and people that used to, seamstresses that would sew and create linens and tapestry, um, had bulldogs, French bulldogs like this, that were their companion, that they would go to work. That industry switched and went to went to France, and so those people then migrated to France. They took their animals with them. So, um, and as soon as the French saw them, then they wanted to have a Frenchie for themselves. So they they claim them as their own, but actually Frenchies are from England and not from France. But uh, um, which I don't know if everybody knows that or not. So. Um, Petunia is four years old, and she, uh, her favorite food is uh, peanut butter, and her favorite uh, toy is she has a little ball that she likes to chase, and then her favorite activity is um, she likes to she has a we have a another dog that is a a pound puppy, and she likes to play with her all the time. They're their uh, their partners in crime. So so I'm gonna move over to our another guest is Phil and his dog Roxy. So mm -hmm. go ahead, Phil and Roxy. Okay, this is Roxy, and I didn't know that about French bulldogs, Chris. About uh, yeah, as actually a British dog. Yeah, but uh, she's all German. She's a boxer. Um. <laughs> in, in another similarity. She, she was raised by a breeder in Missouri. Oh, wow. She came here, and I'll, I'll never know how she got here. Because I, I got her from a friend when she was young. He, he bought her for his boy, and he wasn't treating her right. This was, gosh, a decade ago. She's 11 and a half now. Oh, wow. She'll be 12 in June. Um, she has myelopathy, so she can't walk too well. Um, it's a disease of the spine, degenerative myelopathy, and she she's been doing this for a long time. She's a veteran. Yeah. She's been she's been in a lot of places throughout her life. We were even doing this in Tucson. She's there, so so yeah, she's very friendly. So she has her dog Libby, but you know Riley because she's uh, there every day at the Akoya facility. <laughs> and I did have Libby, but she got bored of me and decided to go run away. I was just holding her sister, and her sister's name is Echo. So she's actually smaller than Libby, and they came from the same litter. Libby is a purebred Yorkie. She is actually a chocolate Yorkie. So she is a little bit different from your traditional. And how that make, how it makes her different is she has a brown nose. So normal Yorkies of all different colors have the black nose, but because Libby is a chocolate, she has a brown nose. And that what is what gives her the brown color. She is AKC registered and papered, so if I wanted to, I could show her, but technically I cannot because she has the most perfect underbite, and it lines up with her nose, so that's not show quality, but to me, it makes her look like a teddy bear, so I love it. <laughs> and she's two years old. Thank you, and we're going to move on to... Jolene and her dog Starla, which uh, me and Jolene, we had few visit visits then. Um, so I think so. Starla is <laughs> amazing job. <laughs> In the window, watching the, the the cars go by. Come here. 
<laughs> well, here's Bud. Here's one of ours. Um, his name is Bud, and he is a Chihuahua Jack Russell mix. He's got a lot of energy. Um, he's he's our snuggler. He likes to snug, and um, he keeps he keeps everybody young because of his energy. Starla, I'll I'll bring her over. Um, she's about twelve or thirteen, and then we also have Astro, who's about the same age. And so we have Bud here, who's five or six. We're not sure because he's a rescue. And he just, he's crazy. He runs all kinds of circles and barks and does all kind of fun stuff and keeps everybody young. But, yeah, he's our boy. And then here's my Starla. And she's she's a Corgi Basenji mix. Um, So she's got the very short legs like a corgi, um, but she's got the face like a Basenji, how they're pretty square. Um, Supposedly, Basenjis aren't, they don't bark. They do like a howl or like a yodel, Um, but she barks. She does like a baru, and uh, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty fun when she gets going um, because you're not expecting that noise to come out of her. But she's an old girl. She's a senior. Um, I rescued her in 2008, so that that puts her at 13 this year, and um, she just had a vet visit, she just had blood work done, and everything is absolutely perfect, and uh, yeah, she's my my best girl. (laughs) I'm going to jump on, so my name is Katerina, you already saw me before and um i work for ages and atlas and uh, we do have a wonderful pet volunteers and here is danielle um danielle is actually a coordinator she uh organizes all of this so she kind of works behind the walls right danielle (laughs) on the floor on the floor today hi (laughs) hi danielle Thank you so much. And did you want to say anything, Danielle, before we uh, show everybody else again? <laughs> um, it's just nice. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I know we would love to be with you in person. But um, thank you for just joining us in this kind of way. And then we hope to see you like really soon. So thank you, everybody. So we're going to go again and do another round. If you guys have time, I... So we usually, before the pandemic, we would have these volunteers and they do this uh, on their own time. Sometimes, you know, everybody has their own regular job and they devote their time after the job to do these visits. Uh, And it's amazing. So most of the time they go in the communities and so some communities, they can't uh, let people in right now that's why we do this via zoom so i'm going to ask you a question if you would like to either say whatever you like about your pet or uh something about what led you to actually um do this type of um uh, volunteering with your pet what was your story so i'm gonna start with chris go ahead chris so petunia thanks um so Petunia is a little tired. Um, she had uh, she went she had to go to the vet today because to get all of her shots and everything or her annual physical. So she that's why she's a little little uh, t- more tired than normal. So Petunia and I started I started training Petunia um, when she was just a puppy, and so we went to puppy training and then we went to intermediate training and and then we went to advanced training, and she still had more to offer and the next level of training was 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 pet therapy training and um i have uh, my brother-in-law is um active with his his pet um uh in flagstaff and so he recommended that um, we do the pet therapy training and get involved in in the community and so that's that's how we got started but it's been um really great uh you just you meet meet so many really nice people and it uh it gives it it gives her purpose to 
you know, she, she went from being kind of a lap dog to a working dog. And, and be the lap. she looked forward to really having, um, coming to, to the, um, you know, the, the facilities and, and meeting all of the residents. And she got really excited about that. She got really sad when COVID hit because, you know, she was basically a, job, a dog without a job. So, um, so we're excited to get back in, in, into the uh, facilities and meet with everybody. Okay, as I mentioned before, Roxy is going to be 12 in June and she's exceeded the box of life average. Average boxer lives only 10 years old. So she's, she's still going strong. If it wasn't for this myelopathy, she'd be very strong. Change. I'd expect her to live 15 years. Oh, here's Libby. She is uh, my best friend. Um, I had a dog that I had for 17 years, and uh, I ended up having to put her down. And I was like, I'm not getting a dog. I'm not getting a dog. My mom calls me, and she's like, I got you a dog. And I got Libby out of that. And once COVID's over, I would like to start training her to be able to have her come in and be a therapy dog. And I actually just got a boxer puppy. So she is a purebred boxer, and my goals are to eventually start having her come in as well to do pet therapy. So hopefully one day you guys will be seeing Libby and um, my other dog, Cleo, around. Libby she just was, I thought of her randomly. I was just sitting outside one day and I thought of uh, going through a list of names and Libby was just perfect. And uh, Cleo, um, my boyfriend actually named her off after Cleopatra. So oh, nice. <laughs> <Very cute. laughs> thank you, Riley. We're going to move on to, um, Jolene and her dog, Starla, I know that Jolene has interesting stories. Well, one of the, the main reasons why I wanted Starla to get into pet therapy was because my mom was going through breast cancer. And when we were sitting there, and I mean, we tried everything. We tried crochet. We tried all the crossword puzzles. We watched all kinds of movies and videos on YouTube. And we were just getting so bored with ourselves because... Um, her her chemo and everything was like eight or nine hours a day and so i thought to myself that it would be perfect um for these people who who have to go through that to have a dog just sitting on their lap who uh they could just pet the dog they could you know starla likes to get her nails done um they you know pet them take naps whatever take pictures and uh that's why i got her into pet therapy Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she's cute. <laughs> she's the best. She she's so well mannered. She's so um the, the way that I describe her is that she just gets it. Like that's what I just say. Like she just gets it. She yeah. gets it. she knows when it's time to play. She knows when it's time to hang out and snooze. Like she knows when it's time to go for a WALK. Yep. <laughs> Time to go for an R-I-D-E. Oh, she even knows the spelling of that. Her ears right. perked up. <laughs> she, she just gets it. She just absolutely gets it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jolene. Yeah. I'm out of the breath because I went to grab our dog. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we have two. This is Shiba Inu. This is Nikita. And... Then we have Kuma, Kuma is black. And so these are very interesting dogs. They're like a Jap kind of like a Japanese brand, really mm -hmm. good for the kids. And, uh, and I do exercise and I can't even talk. <laughs> like, she the Inus are like tall corgis. Make sure that I, I make it. But anyway, so we had, we used to have Australian Shepherd and we had an accident. Um, she actually bit my niece in the face. And so we had to give them to family with farm because I have two kids. So, and we couldn't be without the dog, dogs. And so we researched, we found this beautiful farm and that's where we find Nikita. Four years later, we found 
Kuma. So, but they're not trained. They're not ther therapy dogs. <laughs> they're just family dogs. So, but anyway, so I thought that I will add to our uh, fun yappy hour. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, screen you all of you guys one more time. And to if you wanna add something, something interesting about your dog or anything, or just whatever you like to say and show off your dog. So I'm gonna. Sure. Hey, Chris. So I don't know if you can see how Petunia sits, but she sits with. The, yeah, I was gonna say something about that. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a normal trait for, for for Frenchies, and it's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. But um, it's I guess it's because their legs are so short that they just kind of tuck them in and and they just sit them straight out. But um, so Petunia's literally favorite pastime is watching TV. She watches more TV than than anybody else in the family. And I, I don't know if it's just because I think that French Bulldogs are, are, are sight dogs. So they use their, 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 their vision more than other types of um, uh, senses. And so whenever there's a movie on or even when you guys were talking and you had your dogs up there, she was watching intently because um, <laughs> she just likes to do that. But, I don't know if anybody else has that where they uh, they like to watch TV, but Petunia watches at least a couple hours a day. Um, one thing that really impressed me with her is she she is pretty much leash. She will go where, wherever I go. I don't even need a leash, but some people really get nervous when they have a leash. So I I mean she'll follow me everywhere. She'll she'll just she can she knows what's right and wrong. She she knows me. She's, I, you know, it's amazing. She just, she knows, you know, if I say something, she'll do it. You know, so I, I, I'm just so impressed with her. I mean, she, this is actually Echo. So this is her sister. Libby ran away. So I have Echo. So she's, she's just a little bit smaller than Libby, but the difference is, is her tongue sticks out because she has the normal Yorkie face where her, her bottom, jaw goes in a little bit and her nose sticks out further. So she's got the normal Yorkie face. So she, her little tongue always hangs out. <laughs> Very cute. Okay. And it's good to see everyone. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you guys for your time. And then here I have Jolene and her Starla is resting. <laughs> yeah, she's resting. Old girl, <laughs> she had a hard day staring out the window <laughs> at the mailman and whatnot. Um, yeah, I mean, we're we're excited to get back out there and go and see some fun people and hang out. I mean, that's that's what she does best. She just loves it. She loves cuddling and hanging out, and um, she has uh, some fun outfits. And uh, we got to get her nails painted. And she would love to come and see you guys. So thank you, guys, and have a good day. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.